Because if I'm out painting a wall, if if it's something I'm not happy with, I'm well aware that the world's going to see it. You're going to get 10,000 bloggers taking photos of it and it's going to be all over the internet. Do you think that's what hinders the the the, the, the journey for you? Else? Like you're saying, the perfectionism. Do you think that adds weight to, to that? Those yeah, I don't want anything yeah. out there that I'm not super proud of. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Box created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. You ready? I'm ready. Hello, ladies and Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, essential as you need to be, could be, want to be. Why would you be anywhere else? Fuck that shit. <laughs> um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Uh, hail up everybody that's got the Kellervision app for their sins. Jeez, you're getting the treats. 24 7 street culture and more, yeah? Free download Apple and Android. Um, we're inside the house with the mighty Tom Blackford inside the place. What are you saying, my brother? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, street artist, graffiti, spray can artist extraordinaire, the UK, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Um, some might consider me a street artist, others a graffiti artist, others a, a illustrator. Mm. Try not to try not to box myself into any of those categories. Mm. Just artist. I think um, artist, isn't artist, it? Artist, just artist, yeah. Comics for starters. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Working on a working on a comic at the moment. Mm. Um which is actually um what I first wanted to sort of break into mm. when I was younger. And I've kind of gone full circle. Um so yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I was I was trying to get into the comic industry. Found that incredibly difficult, and uh, almost then found we well, didn't find graffiti. Graffiti was always around, but I I found that as quite a uh, good option in terms of putting my work out there in a in another capacity. In um, an in an on a with another medium. Within another medium, and mm. and then getting an immediate audience, um, and also. I, I I just always enjoyed the notion of being out and about creating mm. art. You know, I'm not yeah. someone that that finds it massively enjoyable spending extended periods of time just sitting indoors at a desk drawing. For sure. Um, you know, it can be it can be quite lonely and isolating working on projects where you're just literally yeah sitting on a desk mm. drawing day in day out. So the 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 notion of going out and painting is. It's always been very attracted to me. For sure. Like even outside of the graffiti, you know, the illegality and the, you know, the hardcore realms, um, the, the, the streets is like the exhibition hall. And like you say, if you're, if you're going out to show off your work, it is a level of by any means necessary, isn't it? And go where the people are. Uh, it, there seems to be the, the the more appealing side to street art for a lot of people, isn't it? Rather than being locked away, you know, like you say. Sure, <laughs> sure. I, I I think now there are more artists than ever that um, you know come from fine art backgrounds or graphic design backgrounds that weren't even initially sort of part of the graffiti scene, mm. so to speak, that are now using street art or painting on the street to find an audience for their work mm. you know it's almost like yeah especially in these days of you know social media and instagram you know you 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 will get your work seen you will get your work photographed by people and mm. and it gives you a, a platform yeah, it does not it you know i mean that being said though i mean you've cut your chops you know 40hk you know all the different things that you've done over the over the years that has, has played alongside nicely with the likes i guess i guess the the uh characters like tizer for instance and and some of the more crossover appealing uh graffiti writers you fall nicely in, on balance with what's going going on i think there's a lot of you know spicy but i think perhaps uh, a lot of the more contemporary artists that you 
the streets as their canvas, they also play in, you know, at risk to the kickback of the hardcore, and, you know. And recently, you know, I've been seeing a lot of like dog shit, you know what I mean? From people I don't I know, th- you know. I think London's always had this thing where like, and, and maybe it's different in other European cities. I, I can only talk objectively of what I've seen mm. growing up in this scene is that um, there's always been a massive legal, illegal divide mm-hmm. in the sense that like, and I think that's changed actually. I think when I was growing up, uh, mid nineties, just getting into graph and or, or whether I was doing it or, or seeing it in the magazines, mm. there was more of a case I think in the nineties of you know you'd have the same graffiti writers doing productions, you know, full on productions in halls of fame that were also involved in the illegal side. Mm. Now I think that's a lot more separate. Mm. I think yeah, you've got a lot of guys doing a lot of illegal stuff now that you don't really see then going into halls of fames and doing productions Mm. with backgrounds and characters. Interesting you say that, it's true. Yeah, I think that's changed a lot. And my theory is that it's because of, not solely down to, but I think social media has a lot to play there. Mm. I, I think the generation, the younger generation now that are getting into it, maybe don't have the same level of patience hmm. that that the old the older dudes had and i th- I, th- I think we're yeah. living in a time with instagram where like people just want to get that instant gratification kudos. Hmm. Uh, so you know why spend 7 8 hours hmm. doing a beautiful piece at hall of fame if you're going to get the same amount of exposure or or kudos from doing an illegal mm. piece that, that people will spend the same amount of time looking at on a you know while they're flicking through instagram just and, flicking away and not yeah. actually think yeah you're right i also i can't remember what i was speaking to about this but there's also the the argument that perhaps street art took the style away from the hardcore graph as well. Now, I'm not saying for a second that there ain't any style out there, but what I mean is, like, when you look at the 80s and 90s with full-blown production, you know, you see those pieces by No Limits or Prime and all those kind of top-to-bottom, like, walls that were done on Trellick, top-to-bottom trains, you know, which is obviously, like, the high echelon of, like, yeah, I definitely want to do that, you know, preferably a New York kind of conversation, but, but that has kind of been relegated and... You see a lot of street art that really do take up a lot of space. And because it's deemed street art, they have more time to be intricate and, um, you know, go with the flow. And I've, sometimes I feel like maybe that there's a lot to be said there for people that, you know, that for the for graffiti to not have that those those values in, their, in the work. And I think maybe street art might have something to do with it. Uh, I think, well, f- f- for me, when I, when I started painting seriously, I, I got into it quite late. I was already in my sort of mid twenties. Mm. I've been like, you know, tagging and messing around with graph mm. before that. But when I started painting, it was, it was predominantly with people like, um, names like Skya and Fex yeah, nice. and Ebsky mm. and they'd already kind of been around and were, you know, done their thing. They were all, like, sort of 10 years older than me. And me painting with those guys was, like, I was very quickly having to sort of up my game in terms of becoming technically proficient. Mm. And um, so, yeah, I was predominantly doing productions with those guys for a good few years, and I was doing characters. Mm. And And by the way... You nail characters, dude. <gasps> Thanks, man. Well, it, it, it comes Ooh. from having always been interested in being an illustrator. Mm. And so when I jumped into doing big paintings on walls, uh, it was an extension. I wanted to extend my illustration work. I think mm. that's where my strength was. Mm. I've messed around with letters, but the, the character stuff was... Mm. I felt like a, a, a little niche that I could carve for myself. Mm-hmm. 
so I was the character bitch definitely for a good few years. Yeah, but you got you got letters too, man. Like, you know yeah, I mean? the, like the, all in terms of all roundedness, um, I feel like you've. They're yeah. Two, they're, yeah, they're two kind of very different disciplines in terms of like. So if if I go out now, I, I've got all these separate factions. So I, if I go out now on my own and I want to do something on the street. That's me. I don't know if you want to call me a street artist or not. I'm, I'm just out there using the streets and using spray paint as a mm. medium to create my illustration work or to paint a, a, a character or, or whatever. <laughs> then I've got the side of me that, that fit, does feel more like a graffiti artist and that's mm. when I paint with my crew and we'll do, uh, you know, we'll paint letter mm. pieces together mm. and then that's when I won't do the character stuff I'll, I'll be like okay i'm i'm wearing this hat today mm. I'm, I'm just enjoying painting letters and yeah. all of that and and then i've got the kind of yeah illustration side so i, I mean i'm full-time artist i do it for a living so when i'm not out there doing that i'm at home and i'm i'm currently working on this comic mm. so yeah it's just like different different hats that's why i, I don't like to be pigeonholed as a Mm. No, I see you as very much you know. an anomaly. Um, in this world where, at the moment, there's certainly like this graph and street art divide that is, is I mean, I wouldn't want to create the narrative here, you understand. This is totally from a perspective of seeing it. But it does feel like... Well, what I'm, I, I think street art now as well is like when I... When I when street art started really blowing up here, it was very much like early 2000s, very like Banksy, people that were inspired by Banksy and mm. a lot of stencil art and stuff. So street art then was kind of defined as, as people that were doing stencils and paste-ups mm. and all that stuff. I feel like now it's kind of like, you know, there's, there's so it's many... It's one and the same almost, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a lot of blurred lines. Mm. A lot of like people that are just really good muralists and painters mm. and I don't know if they're interested in being defined as the street artists I mm. think it's more sort of the the audience that creates these titles mm. you know I mean I'm okay with with if you want to call me a street artist I'm I'm fine with that um call me what what you want you know I'm just I'm just an artist mm. you know I think it's very it's he's quite hard to pigeonhole you and furthermore for your skill set, I've tried. I've tried not. I've tried to not be pigeonholed. Like, yeah, exactly. That's part of my whole thing. It's like, yeah. yeah, okay. You want to call me a street artist? It's cool, but I'll, I'll then go out and do yeah. some, uh, go and do some graffiti, and then mm. I'm, you know. There's actually that's a good point. I mean, Mia, uh, he's character. He can do characters, and he can do full burners, bubble pieces. But, they, but there's a different... His stuff, the stuff he was doing with Solo and Dane. Oh, the, the VIP VO, stuff? The yeah. VOP stuff and the, like, um, the productions that like people like uh, score and deck. Yeah. Th those were the productions that I would see early on where I was like... Oh, the TRC stuff. Yeah, yeah I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. wow. You know, that, yeah. was what, that was what inspired me. Those were the kind of things that inspired me to, to be like proficient at this, mm. at this shit you know just like really get to like how how are these people doing these large-scale things that, mm. that, yeah that's interesting that, that those were the walls that, that really fired me up mm. uh to not be able to diversify with the skills that you have would be uh, would be totally denying the, the you know the vastness of your abilities and going as far as you can and i think anybody that you know I guess it just depends on the person, doesn't it? Like how far yeah, you are and where. That's it. I mean, like, there's a lot of people that become very good at doing one thing, and it almost becomes like a a branding thing where they therefore don't want to go too far outside of that because mm. they're worried about losing that audience they've built through this highly recognisable sort of iconic thing, whether it be a scene or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, with, yeah, a, 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 a writer that's pinned down an outline and then doesn't really stray too far from that in terms of letter styles. But what you're saying is like, what you're saying is, if you start without necessarily having those um, anchor points, 
then you've got more freedom to yeah. advance in any which yeah. way, which is your kind of bag, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. Mm. I mean, like, <clears throat> I'd say, yeah, I'm known within the UK graffiti scene. For sure, yeah, yeah. But then I also have people that, you know, just your regular Joe public that know my work that probably have no interest or no clue that mm. I do graffiti. Maybe they've seen it on my Instagram or whatever, mm. but, but there's a whole... Yeah, section of people that know me through my illustration work and, and my painting work as well, my canvas work, which is why I kind of decided to drop having a um, a graph name. I was I was going by the name Ink Fetish. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. From yeah. I think 2004. I, I went by that for about 12 years, I think. 12 years? Yeah. Wow, time flies. And then, and then decided that I wanted to scrap it just because I thought, you know what, just I'm, I'm doing this full time now. Mm. Um, I don't want to be limited by, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a name that was assess, ass, that was necessarily sort of had had a had a street clout to it. Mm. So therefore, like, I felt like I wanted I wanted to just scrap all that go by my name, do what I do. So all, now all my mural work or my, the street work that I do, all the uh, illustration work, that's mm. all under my name. And the only time I'll uh, go outside of that is then if I, if I now do graffiti mm. and then I'll just use a random name. I've been writing like, uh, been using the, the name uh, Agony and Hernia recently is just a right. couple of names I've been right. like fooling around with. But yeah. I mean, I mean, this is kind of draws the question like, what? Because a lot of people would be asking like, well, how, how do you break and compartmentalize doing that and doing that, and where's the line drawn? And how do you become successful in any one of those things if you're delegating so much to so many different? Yeah, it's 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 a balance, man. It's it's not easy. So it's like, I find if I'm doing. Uh, say commercial work where I'm doing commissioned illustrations or mural work. Mm. Um, and depending on how much creative freedom I've, I've got with those jobs, that'll then spur me on to either kind of go back to doing something very personal, like, like the comet that I'm working on. That's mm. something where like, I've, I've got no brief. I've got no one telling me what to do mm. or, or, or anything that's like a deeply personal project and so while I've got something like that going on I don't mind you know if I've got to compromise mm. my own sort of artistic aesthetic for a you know a commercial job that I might have on so it's it's a constant balance of like doing the stuff I enjoy and then, and then yeah. doing the commercial work does it ever get... Even with the commercial work, I try and inject my own. I'm only really interested in doing jobs that do allow me to like the flexibility to be creative in a. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm like, why am I doing this? You know. Like like doing bar signs in a. Oh. Oh, actually, no. I'm not going to limit your. You know. You know. No, 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 no. I know you what like you're saying. Bar signs I, as well. No, 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 no. I know what you're saying. We got the bar sign crew. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing incredible Hulk murals in gyms <laughs> or like <laughs> Mickey Mouse murals in kids' bedrooms. Yeah. I might do my own twisted Mickey Mouse thing yeah. somewhere else, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love the fact that you pulled them out of the bag like it was like the, the classics front cortex of your mind. Yeah. Um, uh, does it? And I say this mainly with a with a, a small degree of empathy to to anyone that does, because I certainly do, and uh, you'd be right saying you do if you do. Is sometimes when you give up a bit of your creative. Um, well water to, yeah. uh, to a corporate job. Sometimes I come back and I think, well, I ain't fucking, I ain't doing that for a good couple of days now. I'm fucking out. Like, that's just done me in. Yeah, but then you use you use the, um, you know, whatever you've, you've earned from that, you just put back in to what you love doing. Mm. And, you that know, doing, doing things like that, it also buys you the time as well. You know, mm. time is so valuable as I get older, I realise that as mm. well. So, you know, anything that, that gives me the freedom to then 
not have to worry about work for a bit and concentrate on the, the personal work, mm-hmm. you know, I can't afford to turn that down, you know. Mm. It's a balance, isn't it? Yeah. It's a balancing act. It's a constant balancing act. Um, and I feel it's, it's it's got easier for me as I've become more established as well. I can pick and choose a little bit mm. more now, which is nice. Um, and I do feel like I've got a uh, number of people that do come to me specifically because of what I do rather mm. than just being a, a spray can for hire. Yeah, you've got a style. You really do. Like, I, I feel that. I, I can see when it's you. Cheers, yeah. Which is, I think, is the biggest acclaim that you could give anyone. And I, I, I mean, I like to, even though I do these separate things, you know, I do the, the drawing and, and paintings mm. and graffiti and blah, blah, blah. I do like the idea of people being able to see any one of those things mm. and, it, and it being defined as... My style, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's easily recognizable. I want to create this whole universe, and mm. it doesn't matter what medium mm. I'm using to extend that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Without the repetition of like the stamp approach of same thing, same thing, same thing. Yeah, you I want... can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, I've tried doing that whole thing a little bit where I was like, okay, let's take this one kind of give myself a mascot and, and do that for a while, mm. and I just get bored just get bored very mm. quickly i've been doing a lot of stuff with this uh character that i've created called uh mickey scouse <laughs> uh also known as sick mickey um which is like, Sounds a, like a Viz character yeah yeah it's a little bit it, he's just like a uh degenerate version of mickey mouse that likes to party too much and uh, oh, this is yeah so i've been playing around with him recently i've done him in a number of different places and mm. shapes and forms but yeah that's like a little bit of fun uh so yeah we'll see we'll see if i keep going with him it's a funny um, one with the with the graph because like as a medium yeah because that that stamp approach of rep- repetition that's really that's what that's what graph holds its hat to yeah but then and it works though that's the thing, that's the there, thing there, yeah. there are people that that do that thing yeah. And that they become super successful through super doing success- it. I could name yeah. a bunch of people that, uh, uh, you know, mm. it's not what I'm interested in doing, but it works for them and they, they get a following out mm. of it. Um, people like to find security in in recognition, mm. in, in recognising the same thing. And there's a... Branding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's branding. Isn't... It's branding. Yeah. Um. People, people will want to know. I think how. I think monetizing art. Okay, there's some hardcore out there. Would be like fuck that. But then, but then. But I see everyone doing it. Now, everyone's like, doing it, man. Like everyone. Like, and again, in, I just got to pick up Mir again because like Mir's doing the maps like hard, and he, I don't think it's a single compromise in his abilities, and I think it's just. It's just another medium. Nathan Bowen as well, the way he's using the cones and stuff. And just, I don't know, just, you know, just name as well, big shout name. You know, just taking what is at its core, monetizing it. But to a lot of people, that's quite hard. Yeah. It, it, you have to find something that is fun for you to do, otherwise there's no point. But that also has a, has a reach almost outside of... Um, the graffiti world. Mm. Yeah, you have to find something that that appeals. If you if you want to make a full time thing out of it, you know you're going to struggle with if if all you're doing is is letter forms. I think mm. that only goes so far mm. in terms of like broad appeal. Unless you're someone like Scene mm. or even someone like Cope Two, for better or worse. I like the idea of that let the artwork do the talking mm. let the legacy do the talking um yeah uh, yeah there's life a lot short, there, life, life is, is life is short yeah life is short and i think um you know even now there are people on instagram that that i was having this conversation with with a dude the other day and it's like it's not even good enough now to 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 paint an outstanding piece of mm. work, you've got to make a video 
charting it, you've got to do a time lapse, you've got to edit it, mm. you've got to put some funky music. And if you can dance, dance in front of it yeah, too. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> so there's all these separate factions now that, mm. that go with trying to like have, have a platform for yourself. It's almost like you've got to get, make yourself into a mm. TV type mm. celebrity. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Make your, the attention is the, com, the currency, isn't it? People's attention. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. How long can you engage? How long can you mm. can you grab someone for in this age where it's so easy just to slide up and, mm. you know. Tinder the more. shit out of your art. <laughs> yeah. So, so if, yeah, you get a lot of flash in the pan artists, I mm. feel that way. And a lot of kids that have grown up in this in this current climate where they they do see success uh linked to a, a big online following mm. whereas you know i grew up in the early 90s when we didn't have the internet mm -hmm. which is fucking nuts to think about it now mm -hmm. and you know i'd draw and i paint and i wasn't bothered whether anyone mm. saw it if i was satisfied with it mm. then wicked mm. um so now yeah it's kind of uh, things have lost their their intrinsic value, I feel. Mm. And, it, uh, you know, the stuff that's getting created today, I almost feel like it's going to take another 10 years before that stuff is is almost appreciated because everything's going so fucking quickly. Well, not you think nostalgia will play a part in yeah, people's I'd appreciation? Yeah, I hope so. I think that's what we've got. Like, like cream always rises to the top mm. kind of philosophy. I think if you don't try and hold on to that, then you can quite easily get lost in all the bullshit and hype mm. that comes with uh, mm. trying to elevate your yourself in any means outside of just creating and having fun with what you're doing. Yeah, I know what you mean about cream rising to the top and cutting through the noise. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it feels like you've got to go that extra yard to make just drum up, as, especially at the start of anyone's career. It's like. That's one thing that graffiti has taught me is like how far, how much noise can you make to the point of it's like at a risk to your livelihood or your the career that you're setting a path up? Because ATG are a great example. Like big up Jan, rest in peace. And obviously, you know, panic. Went to school and with, with Jan. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, he was Whoa. a couple of years below me. But yeah, yeah, in the uh, Oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah, right at the beginning when he was putting that crew together. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that was pretty nuts seeing... Seeing how quickly, you know, clothing, they, clothing, fucking club nights, and that. But they're a good know. example of a crew that maybe like um, you know went out and did a whole load of stuff, uh, made a massive splash, big mm. impression, and then created this platform for themselves, where then they're able to mm. venture off and do other things. Mm. But the yeah. that but they've got an audience that might have, you know, followed them through that street level approach through yeah. to doing more sort of commercial stuff. Grassroots mm -hmm. level, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a good example of a, a kind of, yeah, modern day crew that really took advantage of uh, the the time they were Yeah, and all the amenities in. that were available. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 100%. Do you think that puts a risk at... Cause you know, you go and check out, oh, oh man, there's fucking loads of writers. And big up all the writers out there right now because there are some amazing ones, um, which are also quite happy in a non-compromising way to do a a map or to do a canvas or to sell... Yeah, people, of people, people <clears throat> are a lot more sort of open to um, commercial artists in yeah. their, their self or, or branding themselves these days whereas when I was coming up it was like oh you know you're a sellout and mm. and all of that um, I think that was already I think that was very much like a 90s thing almost and like when I was starting to become uh, not known but in heavily involved in painting regularly and stuff you could see because of the advent of street art I guess that had definitely become less of an issue and you could see the everything slightly shifting and changing. And there was, yeah, there's always going to be the hardcore writers that are, that are very much against mm. that because it goes against their whole ethos. Mm. And I get that. Um, but, you know, yeah, there's always going to be, there's always going to be those opposing uh, 
the, the, the people that, that think that it should be a completely purist thing mm. and, and those that are kind of more open-minded about it, maybe, and, and pursue their art for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, exhibition halls and things like that, I feel like they're slowly becoming relegated pretty quickly or at least, you know, old guard compared to, you know, I love going to a Hall of Fame and watching people paint for a period of time. You know, obviously not like the whole three or four hours, but I do like going in there and seeing who's about and being able to talk to the artists yeah. and being able to see firsthand what's going on and the environment, you know, it all plays a part. And I feel like maybe as somebody like yourself that kind of dip, has dipped his toe in exhibition spaces and all sorts of things that, you know, pop up demo spots where you would never normally see a graph writer whatsoever or street eyes, you know, I feel like they're becoming ever so imbalanced nowadays aren't they in what sense because because graph is so predominant on the street it's so readily you know searching you will yeah. find you know yeah 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 definitely like yeah i mean like you don't have to have a walk around sort of shoreditch and hackney these days and it's just fucking blitzed mm. you know so yeah it is people are sort of probably more aware of it on a on a street level mm. in terms of the public anyway does it make does it make exhibition halls a little more redundant, or a little bit more high higher class? And I mean, it, it just comes down to the individual and 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 how they want you know how they want themselves to perceive what their what their aim is within this within this culture. Mm. You know, does it ever make you want to kind of go a little bit hardcore here and there? Uh, yeah, I have my moments. Okay. <laughs> I did the I did a track side the other week. Hey. Uh, hey. But you know, like, no one would know. Again, no one would really know that it was me. I, mm. I painted a character, um, so unless you followed my work, mm. you wouldn't necessarily know. It was more about just the the buzz of going out and doing that. Mm. Um, Realised how blind I was. <laughs> Seriously, I was just Too like dark. pitch pitch black. And yeah, I was like, I got kind of a newfound respect for for some of the stuff that people are pulling off on, on mm. track sides these days. But yeah, yeah, that was fun. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm coming up to 40. Mm -hmm. Maybe 40 in a couple of months. And I think you kind of at this stage have to make a very sort of serious decision about where you focus your energy mm. if you're a career artist. Mm. It's like, yeah, I could go out and, and have more of a presence on the streets in that respect. But like... At the same time, that's that's time that I'm taking away from all these other responsibilities mm. that I've got, whether that be like, you know, trying to get this comic done, spending time with my girlfriend, mm. um, you know, just real life shit, you yeah. know, like... Uh, I've heard about that stuff. I hear it's, I hear it's the, 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 the thing. <laughs> What's that? That, you know, real life shit, you know. Real life stuff. Responsibility stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've been very lucky to never have to do that nine to five thing. Mm. I don't have any kids, so I do have a certain amount of free time, mm -hmm. which is important to me. It's always been massively important to me to be mm. my own boss in that sense. Uh, mm. And, yeah, I feel like like that age I'm at now, it is like, where do I really negate my time and my efforts? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, should I, should I go out today and do a letter piece in a Hall of Fame or... or would that time be better suited staying at home and working on this or, or you know? But you've got to have had your 10,000 before you come to this. Explain, I mean, without giving too, away too many of your secrets, because you are fucking, you know, you know how to handle a can and you know how to handle a wall. <laughs> like, come on, like, you know, 40 years, almost 40, right? So how, how do you go about, particularly in the dark, for instance, like, you know, that must change the whole... You know, your whole sensory, you know, the thing you know is suddenly not there. But, like, how do you go about painting a character? Like, from what my understanding of is it in my limited amount of times that I've tried, it's like, this a bit here, no, next can, this a bit there, no, that's not right, erase it. And it's just like, it's a real, it's a, it's like massaging a thing to life. Yeah, Would sure. The, is that kind of the best way to describe me? Yeah, I mean, you're the, the, yeah. you're the you're the you're the Donner. painting characters, I guess. Yeah, it's it's like um, well, it was what I was doing before before I even had an interest in in graffiti. To be honest, before I was aware of graffiti, I was I, I, 
I've been drawing since I was a kid, mm. you know, always drawn little comics and uh yeah, so so when I when I started painting these productions or or painting on the street, it was it was more natural for me to that to to carry on painting characters than it was to try and establish myself as a writer. So, yeah, I would say I don't really have an answer aside from it's always kind of what I've been... I've always been quite comfortable doing them. Is um, it the case of... Like, on a technical level? Yeah, on a technical level. Technical level, yeah. I mean, I like to think I've, I've improved over the years. I look at stuff I did 10 years ago and I cringe, <laughs> you know. Even, even stuff that I did up to like a couple of years ago, I, I see faults You're a perfectionist though, aren't you? Yeah, but yeah. To a, what degree are you a perfectionist? To a fault, yeah, yeah. yeah. To like, um, I get very, you know, I'll finish, I'll finish a piece and it's very rare that I'm, I, I'm satisfied with it, to be fair. But it's not usually until the next day that I, I study it and I look at all the faults or things I missed or should have done or could have done. And I can get bogged down in that rather than just negating it to history and, mm. and working on, okay, what's next? Um, but, yeah, I, I'm generally happier and happier with what I do. Mm. So, like, you know, this year I've done some things where I'm, I, I, I don't look at them and think, oh, I could have changed this. I'm generally happy with what I achieved within the time frame. Mm. Um, Does the corporate side of it give you a a, a, a buffer whereby it's it, the the burden of when perfectionism? I, I should is mention off your when hand. I say corporate, I don't do a whole load of corporate stuff really. When I say corporate, see, I said the c word. You see what happened there? The sell us on it's like hold on, hold on, hold on. You wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. minute. <laughs> let's let's say commercial because I do do a whole bunch of stuff oh, just right. for for private. Um, What's wrong with corporate? For private though? clients. Yeah, but corporate. To me, it means you're working for big brands, which okay, yeah. generally I don't do. I'll I'll, I'll work for um, yeah individuals that are a fan of my stuff. They'll get me in to do stuff, whether that be. Uh, oh yeah, I don't, I don't doubt there's an abundance, but but whether it's commercial or any of these, yeah, does it does it create a buffer which allows you to um, to remove your the emotional attachment to something, so where it goes, okay, oh, that line is a little bit of a. And the geezer's behind you. No. Going, yeah, but I like no, that. No, I still really? put, I still put still just as much effort or, or... No, not so much on an effort level. I'm talking more like on a... You are a perfectionist. Yeah. And sometimes that can, like you say, to your detriment. But if you're standing looking at something and you go and have a coffee and yeah. you come back and all of a sudden you're seeing it in a different light and you think, oh, I need to... Yeah, sure. Is it, does it not, is it not good that you're... Okay, actually, you know what I mean? This isn't... They've already said it's cool. So I can... Draw a line in the sand. That must no. be... Really? No. Would you a... whitewash the whole thing again if you weren't happy with it? I quite often... I'm kind of a li slightly known for it as well. Uh, because, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a piece, go home, and then, then there'll be, like, the smallest thing that I'll notice, that no one else will ever notice. Yeah. But it'll be enough to make me... Go back. Go back and just make that little change. And as ridiculous as it is, I always, I'm always... Glad I did it because I know that if I didn't, that I'd forever look at that photo and and regret not having tweaked this or that. Even if it cost you twenty five quid a cab. But the irony is that that in four years' time I won't like even be thinking about it. I won't, I won't even like that piece. Yeah. But yeah, as I go, everything I do, I've got to be happy and proud with. Even if it cost you twenty five quid a cab to go uh, to go back to a place just to make sure that it. A twenty-five pound cab. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Really? Yeah. See, that's dedication. <laughs> you see, you know what I mean? That's that's some dedication and shit. I got to take my hat off to that because that's that's fire. Yeah, a bit of mental illness as well, probably. But yeah, dedication. But it's, it's also yeah. value for money. <laughs> like, hey, do you mean? Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, we've all got to be. I, I, I am, on the other hand, jealous of artists that do just go out and have a have a whale of a time painting and then don't really, you know, mm. give a fuck and. And you know, or maybe they do give a fuck, but not to the extent that they they get super bogged down by it. But yeah, there, there's 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 a freedom to to not caring too much as well. Do you get bogged down I'm, by it? You get I miss bogged out down on by a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like painting for me, I do take it. 
I do take it very seriously. Mm. You know, some people treat it as more of a social exercise where it's like, you know, oh, let's go out and have a few, have a few drinks, mm. a few spliffs, have a laugh. Um, I love that. Yeah, there's an element of that, but I do, I don't let, I, I want to, you know, like I'll have to, I'll, the painting is the priority mm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's, I think that's, that's kind of where I was coming from with the question. And what would I say? It was more, you know, the mental side of these things. And if you've always got that looming, that kind of thing, then part compartmentalizing all the different emotions and creative outlets and all that thing at the same time, that's a lot of place to be spinning. You know, whether it's yeah. a comic or whether it's... Because the critical eye that you have, I mean, in a good way, yeah, must be a lot of undertaking, a lot of energy. Yeah, well, the thing is, if I'm working on a on a project like this comic, for instance, like, that has, that, that doesn't have to see the light of day for mm. an extended period of time. So, like, I can tweak that and sit with it for as long as I want. Whereas if I'm out painting a wall, if... If it's something I'm not happy with, I'm well aware that the world's going to see it. You're going to get 10,000 bloggers taking photos of it and it's going to be all over the internet. Do you think that's what hinders the the the, the, the journey for you? Else? Like you're saying, the perfectionism. Do you think that adds weight to, to that? Those? Yeah, I don't want anything yeah. out there that I'm not super proud of. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's uh, that's just me. That's just me. So sometimes it is nice to be working at home, whether it be on a canvas or a thing where you can get it just Bang right. On. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <coughs> whatever yes. that means, whatever just right means. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who knows? It's my little ne neurotic edge. Like I'm the biggest, you know, I'm the biggest Slash fan, right? And I know he doodles on the guitar. I know it's not to everyone's fucking taste. And some people, a lot of people won't even like Slash on this podcast. It's... To him, though, it's just such a given that he's just this dude. Right. He exists in an entity and maybe he's just doodled all his life and he makes it look easy and I don't think for a huge second he, he probably does stress over it. You yeah, know what sure. I mean? And it's sure. not to everyone's taste and he, he probably doesn't even want to appease that, but yeah. it's just him and it's no, what yeah. people do. Yeah. And often I think to myself, wow, you make it look so fucking easy. Well, that's the key, I think, yeah, to have that effortless sort of look to things as well. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you can tell when a piece has been there's there's a kind of sweet spot where you can see where a piece has been laboured over maybe too much. You want to retain a certain energy to it as well. Oh, I a good feel point. Yeah. yeah. I used to be super anal about like you know every line being super tight and every fade being perfect and and I like to think now I'm a little bit looser with that stuff and I actually prefer the aesthetic result of mm. of a piece that's that's just a little bit fuzzy around the edges maybe mm. i think if we're getting like really too. nerdy about it do you know what i mean like yeah. if we're talking about you know like cutbacks and all that mm. stuff it's like yeah i do like uh seeing a bit of roughness to my mm. work here and there kind of that yeah. human human touch because otherwise why are we the nature of a spray can is so wild and untamed like mm. I want to retain a bit of that mm. because otherwise you might as well be working digitally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Like this, this, this iPad graffiti stuff that I see popping up on Instagram, it's mm. just like... I don't, the, I don't trust it almost. It's, it's just horrible. It's like the complete antithesis of, of yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, anymore. because you just press a button and then pop comes your thing. It doesn't actually serve as a... I mean, fuck, like, what do I know? Creative... We'll see. I've never used the thing. Sure. But it's um. But like even with my even with my comic, th th this comic that I'm doing, it's all hand drawn, and that's almost quite an archaic way of working now. It's sick though. It's good. Yeah. It because to me it's like half of it is is the therapeutic act of doing it, and I just I just don't get that if I'm looking mm. at a computer monitor. A, a, eight hours a day or whatever. It's just like, I want to feel, someone described it really well, the difference between working um, with a with a pencil or pen directly onto paper on a desk as opposed to using an iPad. And he said, I like to feel, uh, if I'm driving, I like to feel the tires on the road. 
Mm, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, you want to feel that um, that visceral feeling of of drawing, and and that, I mean that's why I love graffiti. I love I love the 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 realness and the rawness of it. Mm, I think art is only ever going to continue one way and that is exponentially all into the different spheres and and out of our control i think um we'll be you know we'll be celebrated for a podcast we'll be celebrated for the the rawness of taking something physical and applying it onto another surface because i think in the future i reckon even instagram will become obsolete you know yeah yeah yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting time. Mm. It's an interesting time because, you know, Insta- Instagram is is something where like I've I've had a number of good opportunities through it. You know, I've had work through it. I've I've even made friends through it. Mm. And on the flip side, it, it's it can become overly consuming, give you a very warped idea of uh, people and art, and uh, you know, because you're presented with these very 2D um, versions of personalities. And, and again, it's what people, it's it's how people ch- very much choose to be viewed as opposed mm. to what the reality of their mm. life might be like. So it's very strange. It is very strange. You know the trick in telling whether people are true to what they are on their main page is you flick to the right, to the... Uh, the tagged photos. Oh right, and yeah, then you yeah. See the real people <laughs> and what they really look like in the camera. No makeup. No makeup. <laughs> with their friends, a little bit pissed, wonky eyes. You know what I mean? Like that's the real. That's the real behind the curtain. <coughs> you know. That's it. Yeah. Their friends don't filter. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on. Yeah, it's been great, man. Yeah. yeah and awesome. uh, bro, like, wish you nothing but love and, and respect and the best for the for the future. Thanks, Tom, buddy. Man. Likewise. Fucking smashing it. Nice one. Keep it going. Do my best. I'll tight, Tom. Yes. Killer Killer Podcast striking again with Avengers. What do you know about that? You know what I mean? Um, sharing's caring. Get involved. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And do not sleep on it. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? You stay lucky, people. Peace. How was that? That was great.